Hi guys, welcome back to the Jaeger Precision YouTube channel. This is a Taran Tactical M4 from Double Bell, which is formerly D-Boys. It's a full metal M4, metal wherever you'd expect it to be, apart from the magazine, the grip and the stock. We'll break into, and the grip, sorry, at the front there, which is an extra. We'll break into the nitty gritty, we'll get the details down, and I've got some criticisms. So let's get to it, and we'll be back in just a minute. The metal actually seems really good for a, for a Chinese made M4. Um, you've got the Vieltor upper here with a BCM front handguard. The one thing I will say is this grip is very cheap. Now you are getting a lot of accessories in the box, so don't count this as really a, a criticism. I mean, you can do without this next thing that I'm gonna tell you about, but when you fire this gun, this little cap on the bottom of the grip uh, comes off. It's probably not gonna fall off now, but when you get the jolt of the gun firing, it just literally falls off every single time. Best thing you do that is just leave it off um, or glue it into place. The grip itself isn't bad at all. I just think that you can get like FMA grips like this style, which are just, you know, tons better quality. And they're only usually about nine or 10 pounds. So it's, they're not expensive at all, but you get it in the box. It's not bad. It goes on the gun. It sits in place. It ain't gonna come off without you putting a lot of force onto it. You've got a nice grip on the front there. Or if you've got like some cover and you want to sort of secure your rifle, you can put it into there. And I don't think you're going to have an issue. You do get some little flip-up iron sights here, metal ones. Again, you're probably never going to use them. It comes with a scope. It's one to four times. It's actually pretty good um, for the, the quality of scope that it is. It is made in China, you can tell. But you're getting it included with the rifle. So honestly, that's a massive pro. You've got a big chunky flash hider on here, which is found on the Tarans, I, I believe. Qu uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You've got... A big baffle section in the rail here, which sits in the rail, which stops the rail from moving. I have come across a few of these BCM, cheaper BCM style uh, handguards, and they are wobbly as hell. Um, I came across one on, a, on an MWS a while ago, and honestly, you could just you could just rotate it round. <laughs> Keep your jokes to yourself. Um, so it's nice to put that baffle in the in the front of that spacer just to keep it nice and uh, rigid. You know. You've got your rotary style hopper bit unit in there, which does look similar to like a, an Ares one or a bit like a Crytac one. The wheel does move quite loosely. So I'm sure there's a way we could get to that to sit more securely in place and not move as we fire in the rifle. The magazine, you use a little winder that comes in the box with it. If you don't use that winder, you can't wind your mags, which is a bit of a ball ache, but you're gonna want those nice extended base plates on there anyway plenty of real estate there if you want to put some markings on with a with a laser um the stock is actually nice and secure it doesn't move about all that much yeah it's actually quite rigid for a, for a cheaper stock um so nothing really to say there you've got points there to put on a sling which is great i'm going to buy that extra and it's just it's just a nice little rifle for the money to be honest it is illuminated on the scope but um Let's get this thing under the camera, let's have a closer look, and we'll get a bit further into it. So here it is guys, the Double Bell Tarrant Tactical M4. You see here the receiver's not bad, it's covered in the usual oil and stuff that they have from the factories. But uh, let's get a close look at this thing, the magazine. It's a high cap magazine, I reckon it's about 300 rounds. Nice base plate on the bottom, nice and chunky, it does give it some weight. That probably weighs more than the, the whole magazine itself. Not a bad little magazine, to be honest. What I did find super annoying on this thing is every time you fired it, this little cap at the bottom of the uh, front grip fell out, which, to be honest, if it was me, I'd just leave it out because it would get super annoying. Or super glue it in if you're not going to, well, to be honest, there's not much storage space in there anyway. Um, the next niggle I had was with the grip. Now, as you'll see here, it's like a 416-ish style grip here. And this little thing, now, as you'd imagine on a lot of other retailers, how they do it, they'd have this thing, you'd open it up, and then you'd have the motor adjustment underneath it. But Double Bell have done it slightly differently, so that cap is your motor adjustment. And they do have like an O-ring built into it to give it a bit of stability. But that to me just seems like a thing under vibration 
is gonna is gonna want to chuck itself out. So um, that could be a potential issue in the future. So again, what I would do, and it didn't really seem to give much adjustment as well because you engage the O-ring and then you can do it about a quarter of a turn. That's about it didn't really adjust the, the motor all that much, so it might need a smaller O-ring. Or what I would say is take the O-ring off, get a really fine O-ring, um, put a bit of Loctite, blue Loctite on the threads, and then just put it in, get it to where it's a nice sweet spot, and then just let it go off, and then you shouldn't really have an issue with it again. So this is the 095M Plus from Double Bell, which is the, the slightly longer barrel. And you've got like this, um, I think, this, is this a copy? Is it a copy of the Magpul? The Magpul stock, is it an SL or something like that? Again, if I'm wrong, quote me below. And then, of course, they fitted it on a, on a Tamiya battery, which, to be honest, I don't know why. If they are paying attention to what other brands are doing and, and what the, the trend is going with the, in the airsoft industry, they should at least go oh you know what guys we we really need to start putting deans on from the factory because it's kind of like the becoming the standard um nothing that a couple of quid and you know five minutes can't fix it'd just be nice if it was done already you know what i mean so it's got a bcm style rail here which is secured here it does have a baffle in the in the rail to stop it from moving about which is nice that tells me at some point they've done these rails and there was movement so they've put something in the front to stop that Flipping it over, you've got this huge forward assist section that you get on the VL tours. Lock that back. And we have our hop up adjustment. We chuck it down for more hop. And again, it does stiffen up a little bit as you start to adjust it down, but it only stiffens up as you literally get to like almost full, full hop, like adjusted on. So we'd have to perhaps fit something like an O-ring maybe or something to uh, to stiffen that up because the last thing you want to do, be doing is firing the rifle and your, your hop's adjusting itself off because it is a little bit loose. Let's take this scope off, let's have a look. So, it's not a very big scope, but again, it's not it's not heavy, which is good. You take your caps off, you've got like a normal style adjustment with a, you have to do with a screwdriver. Again... If the, I mean, it's nice, it's got a nice click on it, but it really should be paying attention to what everyone else is doing. And I hate to use this as an example, but it's the only one I've got to hand. If you're going to have caps, make it so that when you take the cap off, you can adjust it by hand. The last thing you want to be doing is carrying loads of tools out with you on the field to adjust your optic. Let's say if you do take a tumble and you bump it or something like that. Has anyone got a flathead screwdriver? Because your scope's off, so... Flip this up here. This might be a bit difficult with the light. Let me turn the uh, let's turn this big light off. <clears throat> and then we should be able to look through the scope. So this is on one times. If we adjust it, we can turn on the illumination. That's max red and that's lowest green, so it will do red and green. And of course, if I can get this to focus here. We can zoom in, but the eye relief is going to go naff to record on camera, so I'm not going to go through all that. But you got one times to four times. Let's put the light back on, uh, which is nice. So waterproof, frog proof, shock proof. I wouldn't want to test that shock proof for this. <laughs> it's a cheap scope, but again, like I keep reiterating, it's it's what you get i mean what other scope what other rifle can you buy for 300 pound which comes with an optic a short dot optic like that that's got one to four times i don't think you can so that's nice um the metals they've used a really nice quality you know they're, they're obviously going to have a budget limitation for what they can put this out for um 
the magazine does click into there nice, nice and uh, snug. Can we get this back on? These cheap scope mounts are always a pain, and they are, they are high rise scope mounts, but they are what you'd imagine to buy. Like if you used to go buy a set of these scope mounts off eBay for five, ten quid, you can understand the quality that you'll get in the box. But you know, all my criticisms out of the way. I just thought I'd mention these few things, you know, because you're going to obviously want to know that when you're making a decision to pick one of these up. We'll get back on camera, go through my final thoughts, and then we'll wrap this video up. So you'll see from the chrono results there, and it is doing a little bit more than it should do, but don't fear, this has just been sent to me in the exact spec that it comes in the box from the factory into the UK distributor. This is how they arrive. I imagine they do it in these power limits because they can send it to more. I mean, the market in the US is, is huge compared to the UK and Europe. Um, so they're usually doing about four to 450 over in the US. That being said, anything that comes to you from a retailer in the UK, I know um, the distributor will already downgrade them and then ship them to the retailers. They'll be doing about three to 350, but you can always you know, swap a spring out if you need to. So don't fret, that result is only a me result. It's not gonna be what you get when you order one of these and you get it delivered to your door. The battery that I was using is one that I use in a majority of my guns. I use this in all my Ares rifles, the 308, the plethora of like, the KWAs. Stock tube lipo from Bigfoot. This is a Bigfoot 1300 milliamp 11.1 .1 lipo. And to be honest, this is one of the best batteries I've found in a long time and they're not expensive at all. So I do have a few criticisms on this thing. Um, first of all, it comes on a Tamiya connector. These manufacturers, especially ones that are encroaching on other uh, brands territory now, especially with a rifle like this, it's very simple. Just put a Dean's connector on it straight from the factory. It's kind of the gold standard now is what everything should have, bare minimum. Um, I mean, you know, if you if you are pushing high amperage and you are putting a lot of current through the rifle, then I do recommend you go up to like an XT60. But a Dean's connector should be fine for pretty much everything that you do. That's just going more into the sort of really future-proofing the crap out of your rifle. So the fact that it came on a Tamiya is annoying because then I've got to get it on the bench and take the connector off, put a Dean's connector on. Don't use an adapter, guys. Just get it switched over. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, review of the Doorbell Taran Tactical M4, what is it actually called? Uh, an 059M Plus. It's a TTI M4 with a longer front guard. They do it in a shorter version as well. And if you want something out of the box, it's just gonna be, you get it out, you put a battery and some ammo and you go out of the field. And it's pretty much set up. You know, you haven't really got to do anything to it. Then it's cracking for 300 quid retail not a bad rifle at all but what they do need to be careful of is how close that retail price starts encroaching on other brands because you know 300 plus you start getting into Crytac and other brand territory and they just need to be careful that they don't price themselves out of the uh, the quality bracket but it's a nice little rifle you get loads of bits in the box you know you've got all the the, the correct receiver parts there you just need some logos on there if you wanted to complete the John Wick look. But uh, if you take all M4 magazines, you don't have to use the one that comes with it. It would be nice if this was a mid cap um, because then you wouldn't have to fart around with uh, winding it up. If they did this as a mid cap, like 120 round mid cap with the base plate on and sold them as spares, they'd be onto a winner. Double bell if you're listening, that's what you need to do. It's what people want. Not many people use high caps nowadays. Or not many people that the sites that I go use high caps nowadays. More people, more and more people are using mid caps. They're just far superior to a high cap, unless you're trigger happy and you just want to hose every bush in sight. You know who you are. So thanks for tuning in this review. Hope you liked it. On the next one, well, I'll say on the next one, on the Jaeger Precision channel, I'm uploading all my old reviews as well. So they're just getting uploaded to make sure the video goes out every day. And I started that on August the 14th, I think it was. And I'm going to try and upload a video every day for the next 12 months. So we'll see if I can do it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you like this rifle from Double Bell. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.